Blue Zoo TV, presented by Hikari, featuring Fluval. It's day two at the New England Aquarium. Last time, we stopped at the Amazon exhibit. Today, the rest of the aquarium, starting with the freshwater ecosystems. Scott, we just saw the Amazon exhibit. Uh -huh. Explain a little bit about where we're at now. Uh, we're still in the freshwater gallery at the New England Aquarium. The way we present freshwater exhibits is first we um, show our visitors uh, Amazonian fish, just the spectacular diversity of, of fish that come from the Amazon. We want at that point for our visitors to just say, wow, freshwater is cool, and we use the Amazon fish to do that. However, we also have some spectacular native fish here in New England, and so the exhibits segue. First we show the river systems of South America, then we have exhibits showing uh, the freshwater ecosystems local here in New England. And uh, we do have some really neat fish, and a lot of fish uh, people have grown up with, but to see them in an aquarium alive, you have a whole new appreciation for them. That we have fish like uh, the pumpkin seed sunfish, which is just gorgeous yellow and, and red. Uh, we have lots of neat uh, minnows and shiners, catfish, darters, uh, and um, lots of neat displays. We have fish from, uh, from rivers like trout and, and salmon as well. Scott, we're here at the New England Aquarium. First question that comes right out of the mind, how long has it been? The New England Aquarium opened in 1969, um, and it's considered to be the first of the modern aquariums. There were some aquariums established. Uh, the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago goes uh, back um, to the early 1900s. Um, and now, New England Aquarium has about 1.2 million visitors a year. How many gallons, because this seems like it's a five or six story building, how many gallons and how do you keep track of all the fish mm -hmm. in the system? Um, our central exhibit has just under 200,000 gallons of water. It's a Caribbean reef display. It's a fiberglass coral reef and uh, with lots of uh, Caribbean fishes. We have a, a database of our entire living collection. We know exactly how many fish are in each exhibit, each holding tank. Um, if a fish dies, our database is adjusted. When we acquire new fish or when we have some spawning going on, we continue to update the, um, the database daily. So at any time, we should have a snapshot of uh, a very good idea of, of how many fish are in our collection. Scott, explain a little bit about the dragons because they are, if anything, really elegant. The sea dragons are one of our most popular exhibits here at the New England Aquarium. Uh, many of our visitors have never even seen pictures of sea dragons. They don't know that that animal exists and it's a, it's a very spectacular animal and it's something that is um, it's a very powerful experience that can happen at a public aquarium when you're inches away, when you're face to face with an animal that is so beautiful and so striking that you've never even known has existed before. That's something that can be accomplished at a, at a public aquarium like this. Scott, one of the things that really draws my attention to this tank just by itself is the sheer glimmer and glamour of it. What is it? This is our schooling exhibit. This is where we exhibit um, a uh, strategy that fish have developed uh, for uh, a number of benefits, um, which is schooling. Schooling behavior benefits fish in a number of ways. It uh, enables them to evade predators um, very well because when predators see such a mass of fish, they have a difficult time focusing on one individual to attack. When groups of fish like this swim together, they can ride in each other's draft and use less energy. Uh, they can be more effective at, at feeding. So schooling is a very important mechanism for fish, and um, it works very well on the, in the display. Scott, when we first walk in, we see a sign that says Penguinology. And really, the penguin display hits you pretty much over the head right when you walk in the building. This has to be popular because I'm sure kids like penguins. What was the theory of putting this where it's at? 
The penguin exhibit is extremely popular. When we ask people why they've come to the aquarium, a lot of people say to see the penguins. And New England Aquarium's penguin exhibit is fairly unique in that it's open air. Most uh, penguin displays are behind glass. Um, our exhibit um, has a sense of connectivity with the visitors. Visitors can lean in and, and you can smell the penguins and hear the penguins and uh, there's nothing that's really uh, between you and the penguins. We have three species of penguins on exhibit. Um, Rockhopper penguins, um, little blue penguins from Australia, and um, macaroni penguins. Okay, this is the food prep area at New England Aquarium, and this is where a lot of the foods are prepared for, uh, for the exhibits that are gonna be fed throughout the day. We can see some people over here um, preparing some shrimp. Um, more shrimp work going on here. Um, and we have uh, lots and lots of food stored for the day to be, to be fed off. This is some clam. And here we have some frozen krill. And we'll go through all of this in a, in a day. Scott, one of the unique things about the New England Aquarium is it's sitting literally on the ocean. Are you able to utilize that at all when it comes to filtration? We do use the ocean. In fact, that's our source of uh, seawater, and it has been since the aquarium opened. Um, when we take seawater in, we just filter it for particulates, and then it's distributed throughout the building. Each of the displays is isolated. It has its own recirculating life support systems, but each of the marine exhibits has a constant uh, replenishment of fresh seawater uh, coming into them. Um, and uh, when the water overflows out of the exhibits, we're careful to manage that in a responsible way. We have aquatic life from all over the world here in our collection, and our water gets disposed back to Boston Harbor. The way we process that is it goes into a, a central uh, vat. When that, when that reservoir gets full, it gets sterilized, and then um, it gets neutralized and then discharged. So the water leaves New England Aquarium cleaner than it, it came in. Jeff, we're behind the scenes here at the New England Aquarium and I run across a couple really cool Fluval products, Cycle yep. and Aqua Plus. Yeah, actually, Frank, we're excited to bring these back. These are new to the market this year. Cycle, great biological booster, great for new aquariums, removes ammonia, removes nitrite, just kind of a natural way, not a chemical. Aqua Plus, same thing, great conditioner, removes uh, chlorine, chloramines, toxic metals, actually has a pure herbal extract in it, this valerian root actually helps the fish relax, the stress reducer. Well, I guess if they're going to use it at a public aquarium, they should be able to use it in their own. That's right. Available at stores, uh, check it out on the website, there's some really cool stories about it. To wrap up the show, I've kind of moved in from the confines of New England Aquarium, because last time we tried wrapping up the show, Scott, needless to say, got me shocked by an electric eel. But this is Blue Zoo TV, presented by Hikari, featuring Fluval. Day two, wrap up of the New England Aquarium. Next up, whale watching. You gotta check this place out. Blue Zoo TV is presented by Hikari, making species specific diets long before it was fashionable. Because at Hikari, we know it matters. And featuring Fluval, discover life below water with Fluval. Blue Zoo is proudly partnered with Carib Sea, bringing science to life. Nature protected, nature perfected with Carib Sea. To email the show, go to bluezootv.com and follow us on Twitter at bluezootv.